Can you tell me who you are? Eli Nogato. How old are you? Seven. I like playing soccer and playing games like Monopoly. Eli is an awesome kid. He's uh, very energetic. Dynamo! Likes to make people laugh. Why did the quick chicken cross the road? Um, he's very sweet. <laughs> That's all right. Um, he's very hard-headed and very competitive. Um, he, he's a soccer fan. He plays soccer. He's very competitive in that, and he has the heart for it. I'm a goalie, and I play for Rise. He has a lot of side effects from the chemo, so he um, gets held back a lot, but it, it never bothers him. Um, I'm going to die for those balls. I might go versus you, so I'm going to beat you. Sure you are. Um, let's see, so he got sick. We would go in and out of the hospitals. He had stopped eating, he was dry heaving, you know, he didn't, he would throw up and nothing came up. And he would scream in pain and just fall asleep. And so one day I was like, um, my daughter missed the bus. And when I was driving, turned around, driving home, I needed to run a lot of errands. And I was like, okay, and Methodist was coming up and something just told me, hey, go tell your story at this hospital. Like, he needs to, he needs to stop here. So I pulled over to Methodist and they started an IV and um, he got the blood work and came right back and was like, um, your blood is contaminated, I need to redo it. But they had already knew that um, he had cancer and um, sent us for a CT scan and an ultrasound and all his organs were already inflamed and enlarged and shutting down. We got transferred over to MD Anderson and that became our life, was MD Anderson and Eli's leukemia journey. Can you tell me what your treatment was like? It was hard. I don't really remember that much. Only thing I remember, um, I was like sitting down and always sleeping and every time they um, come in, they check me and I liked them. They helped me um, survive. It felt like my world just crashed, you know. I was heartbroken, didn't know what was gonna happen, didn't know if Eli was gonna make it. I needed my mom, and my mom was in the hospital. The first, you know, year of diagnosis, I barely saw my other two kids. You know, they needed me, I needed them, but Eli needed me. Um, let's see, I think it was probably the third day we um, were in the hospital and um, Janie from the Candlelighters came into the room and she's like, well, I'm a, from Candlelighters, I'm a parent consultant and um, my daughter has been through what you're going through, so I know how it is. And she just gave me this big old hug and uh, it just melted my heart because I needed that. So I said she would be there if I ever needed her and she's been there the whole time. So it's awesome, I love her. <laughs> I like candle lighters because they send me to parties. Um, it's fun, like we get invited to um, Astros games and Houston Dynamo games. So candle lighters gave us tickets um, two weeks ago for the, the Houston Dynamo, and he's a big fan of that. Houston Dynamo! So he, he was like, yeah, I'm going. And we got to meet his favorite uh, player, Valentin. I was sitting and I was right by, um, the um, entrance where they come out. So I went all the way down and, and I went to the place and I, and I got everybody high five and I just saw Valentin. So I got a picture with him. So to go to events, it just kind of makes the kids feel like, hey, I'm still a normal kid. You know, I don't have chemo that day or, or you know, I don't have to take my medicine that day. So, hey, we can go out and hang out as a family and go, go to a party or go to an event and just be a kid that day. Does Kendall and stuff your mom have friends? Mm hmm Because um, she needs more friends because she's lonely. <laughs> That's all right. You know, and I think I've lost all my friends and have gained all cancer friends just because it's so easy to understand what we're going through. Uh, it's very important for candlelighters to be there. Um, they help you walk through that cancer journey. Um, they help with the with the food and parking. It helps because thirteen dollars a day at that garage is horrible. You know it adds up because like you know yeah you have insurance but you know they don't cover food and and rent you know to have a hotel or you're there all day. Food's expensive and 
you'll order breakfast and lunch. Sometimes you're even getting dinner on the way home. It will be a part of uh, Candlelighters Forever. Just because our journey's over, they don't say, oh, okay, we're not gonna help you anymore or anything like that. You know, once you're a candlelighter, always a candlelighter. Sometimes I even think about, you know, maybe asking how, do, how can I help, you know, also, so I can help another family go through and understand what we went through. Um, for the future, I'm hoping that, you know, his body can heal from all the side effects that, um, you know, he has from the chemo treatment. Just be a kid that, you know, from the two years that we've lost, you know, he's entered into school and is on a great soccer team and just living life. Once you get done with all of your treatment, how do you think your life is going to be different? Mm, because I don't need to go to the hospital that much. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs>